Welcome to the On Stage Podcast, where we deep dive into the power of music and entertainment. Welcome, everyone. You will not believe who we have back with us today, multi-instrumentalist James A. Norkowicz, who is a composer, jazz pianist, and he has his own diverse musical background to the mainstream with a new music genre referred to as classical crossover. By covering modern songs and using classically trained artists to craft unique arrangements, Jim Norkowitz blends old and new in brilliant fashion. He provides what he describes as musical clarity and the development for expression and interpretation. And before I continue, I know that if I continue, we won't need him anymore. So we're going to make sure he can speak for himself. <laughs> All right, Mr. Norkowitz. Nork Actually, James has been on our platform for more than like four or five times, and he's always got a good anecdote, a good joke, good story, and he knows a lot of people. So will we be seeing... Taylor Swift on the podcast? Well, you have to subscribe to find out. All right, Mr. Norkovich, it's very pleasant to see you again. Uh, hey, how you doing? What have you been up to the last few months since yeah. the last time you were on with Liza Gioni Cambino? Well, uh, of course, we had, we had Christmas, and then, of course, at the beginning of the new year, you know, like everybody always says, you know, what is going to be the next um, project? What's going to be the next thing? And uh, this particular project, as you know, uh, in talking with you and a lot of other people and just uh, tons of people, this is something I, I wanted. You always want to get back to your roots or celebrate where you're from. And it's not that you don't do that in your music anyway uh, this had for this particular album uh, it was specifically designed to show people when people say whoa where are you from where did you grow up you know what was it like growing up where you wherever you came from you know who were your influences what made you you can you tell me about this experience can you tell me about that and um, this is a great insight to anybody want, who wants to know anything about me, anything about where I came from, and then all the experiences that you have growing up from your first love to, you know, celebrating family, celebrating community, celebrating friends, relatives, you know, your first job, your, for your, your school. Whatever it may be, all these songs are infused in one single album on 17 tracks. And believe me, I thought this was going to be easy. And um, <laughs> I, I was sadly mistaken because, you know, it, you have to remember how old you are and then go back all those years and take all those memories and all those experiences and roll them up into one single album. So, to answer your question, um, if the album could be split in two, it probably would have over 40 tracks. Some of them were just simple, simple ideas, you know, simple instrumentals, and I said, okay, well, you know, this will work. But I wanted to put a concrete album defining all styles from jazz to R&B to pop, to um, the instrumental to classical crossover and deliver them in a way that would really resonate. So you may not be where I'm from, but you can take the same experience and just place that in, in, in your body, internalize it, and whether you're from Canada, whether you're from Russia, whether you're from California, whether you're from Texas, whether you're from the UK, you're able to actually take the same experiences and say, oh, well, this makes me remind me of blank. And I remember when I was here, it's like we all know where we were when 9-11 happened, right? Kind of the same ex experience. So we take 
those experiences of where, who we are, where we were, and um, really just internalizing it. Before we discuss your new album that you just released on Spotify, and we will link everything below, this beautiful album called The Hometown Homecoming, can you give us a little bit of a, let's just say, what's your motivation for releasing this album, your whole, whole songwriting process, and this interesting column, there's an interesting song called Ode to B.T. Barnum. Can you give us a little bit of explanation on what, first what your motivation was to this album? Yeah, I, I, I think everybody's proud from where, where they, came, they come from. And, you know, as we get older, we get married or you don't get married or, you know, you, you move or you travel and you see all the places in the world but no, they, they say there's no place like home, right? Well, I wasn't going to do a take of, uh, you know, um, Dorothy and Toto and the Tin Man and, you know, that in a video. But so Bridgeport, Connecticut is where I'm born and raised. And the city is infused with a lot of history. B.T. Barnum was actually our first mayor. P.T. Barnum and the whole circus started in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Uh, as we have the P.T. Barnum Museum, we have P.T. Barnum, you know, the homes. And I mean, the entire city is called the Park City. We have the most parks in any city in the country. And, um, or at least one of two, um, you know, uh, I've got a song called Seaside Park. It's one of the biggest, largest parks on the sea. Absolutely beautiful. Many music festivals, sporting events. I mean, you know, are held there. And at the very end, where you can go on the on the beach, there's a long walkout, and, and that'll bring you out to the lighthouse, um, which was my inspiration for my the album Lighthouse, oddly enough, and. Uh, so an ode to P.T. Barnum, there's, you can Google it, P.T. Barnum, Bridgeport, Connecticut, and there's a statue of P.T. Barnum sitting on a chair and he's overlooking Long Island Sound. So when I say the hit days, the, the um, city is full, full of history and full of, you know, just so much nostalgia. I mean, we were the industrial capital of the world. So instead of things being made in China, they were actually made in Bridgeport. So if you go, you know, pre-Vietnam, pre-Korean War, you know, you go around the 30s and 40s and, you know, there is albums. We had we had uh, Columbia Records. We had, uh, we had General Electric, Remington, Remington Arms, all started here. Um, so to showcase where you come from, I'm very proud of where I've come from and, um, many, many famous people are from Bridgeport. If you've ever watched Cheers, Cliff the Mailman, born and raised in Bridgeport, Connecticut, um, Richard Belzer, John Mayer, um, just to name a few. So common everyday people that you've seen on, te on television and who really have made an impact in the world. A lot of people got started here. Basically to our proximity to New York City, you know, um, you, you, you can experience all four seasons and yet you don't have the hustle and bustle of the city. Now, uh, that being said, this, this city was in a, for many, many, many years, a, uh, let's say it wasn't in the best condition and now the city is thriving brick and mortar restaurants buildings artists housing i don't even recognize it it's been 10 years since i i since i lived in bridgeport and i went back a couple of years ago and i really i did not recognize it at all and I mean, progress is up 500%.
and due to COVID, I mean, that really changed the game because people are now investing in the city. There's entertainment, there's, there, you know, there, there's food, there's just so many things to do. And there's an amphitheater and big name acts are coming. I did know at one point that they actually wanted to get Taylor Swift in, in Bridgeport. To think that what now is an amphitheater used to be a baseball stadium. Wow. But Bridgeport is full of arts. It's full of history. It's full of, um, you know, community. A lot of people have left the city and moved down, but now they're, they're coming back even to visit and knowing where the, your roots are. And that's what this whole album is about. Knowing where you came from and knowing where you're going because it's always good to remember, you know, where you got your start. What was the reason you left Bridgeport originally? Oh, well, of course, when you when you fall in love and and, and you you relocate and um, I think as everybody does, you know, and uh, you know, when I when I left the, the city was not in the condition that it was it is today. I mean, they it, it is just it, it's glorious and, and immaculate. I mean, I like every city. It's, it's got its it's got its areas and its parts where you you know I highly wouldn't recommend going there at night. But the downtown scene has changed. The uptown uh, where I'm from has changed, and um, and the history of the city is still there. I mean, you can uh, in any of my posts and in anything that I you know say or do, I encourage people to Google. And you'll see that uh, yeah, there's quite an array of, of things to, if you're visiting in the area, you know, to kind of check out and see what's going on. So this girl that you, that you fell in love. <laughs> I married her. <laughs> <laughs> and then you. <laughs> right. <laughs> awesome. So what is your... For instance, there's a beautiful song here called Forever Love, Grace's song. Who's Grace? So Forever Love, um, so I, matter of fact, my, it was actually my cat. Um, big animal lover, as as I, as, as, as we're talking, uh, Elvis, my Boston Terrier is going underneath my feet. He's like, he wants to be on the podcast. Um, she... I awoke to her, her, she had passed away and, and was on and passed away in the kitchen. So I have this little, little paw print thing. And then as I was putting the album together, you know, it, it said, if, if love would have saved you, you would have lived here forever. So that's where the forever, forever love kind of inspiration came from. And you know, it, it you know you can tie that to and you can tie that to a pet. You can tie that to uh, you know your first love, you know your first crush. Um, so that's that, that's kind of what I wanted to invoke in that in that particular song. When you left Bridgeport, Connecticut, what was your mental health like? What was your mindset at that point? Well, the thing is, you know, after growing up in Bridgeport and, um, you know, it's, it's hard to watch everything that you, you know, I, I've talked about this with, you know, friends and, 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 uh, and other, other people. We all have the memories of the things that we did when we grew up, right? So it was one of those things that, you know, when you see things decline and now everything does over time, you know, it, it does kind of bring you down. You know, I mean, we were in the news for all the wrong reasons at one, at one point, um, <laughs> only because I, I think in 1991, we had the most murders in the country. Now, you know, the old, like the old added adage, you know, it, it can't get any, it, it can't get any worse than that. 
So from the seed where the city has grown from 1991 till today, um, you know, back, back, back then it was, you know, of course you want to be able to explore and you want to be able to see, see more things and experience new, new things as well. So, um, I guess you could say you just got used to everything and then, you know, now as things are on the, on the, on the upswing, it's, um, it's nice to, it's nice to say, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm from there. I'm, 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 you know, I, this is, this, this is who, this is who I am. And this is, you know, who my, where my family's from and, you know, and then oh, just that whole family lineage and, and on basically also many things. It's a beautiful album. I would suggest people go down to Spotify or wherever, social media, whatever music platforms, and download this album and listen to it. The one song I'd like to ask is about when will it be me? When will it be you for what? Okay, so those are one. I'm glad you asked. Um, that's a self prophecy type of song. So I wrote it third person. And growing up, you know, both my sister and I, we didn't go to public school. Public schools really weren't, they weren't bad, but, you know, at that time we went to a Catholic school for, um, you know, K through high school, really. And, you know, there were times, you know, whether going to, to grammar school or high school or even college, I stayed and stayed in, in, in town. Um, you ever experience like a, you know, you wonder when, when is that break going to happen? When is, you know, when is that, you know, thing you've been wanting to happen going to take, uh, you know, take place. Mm -hmm. So this song, of when when will it be me? It's like you know, it's that thing when we say, you know, when is it my turn? You know, when it, you know, I've been working so hard as a cellist, and you know, I'm going to the New York Symphony, and you know, you know, when am I going to get first chair? When will it be me? You know, and those are one of those life experiences that, again, something something that I felt that is part of the story of, of what needs to be told and for me and i think i said this numerous times i i i i wanted to quit and say you know i'll just and just chuck the you know chuck the keyboards out the window and, and give up and you know and then you go well if i do that then you know then how guy am I gonna express myself? How am I gonna, you know, tell the world and even tell myself, you know, how am I how am I gonna have that outlet? And um, so when will it be me? I mean, is just one of those questions that I mean it can be virtually anything. Um, but in my case, in my case it it, it would it was music, it was, you know, could have been, you know, your, my first job, you know, it could have been any of those experiences that make you want to question something. Jim, when you said that you felt that you just want to take the keyboard and, you know, and something you would just want to throw it against the wall or out the window, what was going through your mind? Was it a raging sea? Was it a what what was going through your mind when you felt that way? You know, you just you get to those points in life that you you know you. I think at that particular time, when you to listen and absorb what what people or people in the in the arts or professors or. Or just people I was working with, you know, was trying to tell me. I mean, don't let anybody get you down. This is you don't become a musician 
because, well, <laughs> it, the goal is to make money, but the goal is to also use your creative outlets to help people. Like I always say, if anything that I do helps at least one person that done my job, um, you know, but it can get frustrating because when you're, you know, working so hard and you find yourself at a dead end and it's like, am I making any headway? You know, is, is this worth my time or should I go and be a construction worker? Um, I've done many, many, many things and you know, it all comes back to music being what God has given me as as, as a talent and, and has shown me what, you know, he wants me to do and pursue. So um, it doesn't help when people have burnt, you know, have burned you and, and, you know, have dragged you through the mud, you know, it hurts. And, or accusations and things of that nature, it, it's very, very tough, but it, it, it makes you resilient. And, you know, through my faith and, you know, and talent and, and persistence, you keep moving on and you use it to make you even stronger and use that through music to express how you're feeling. What if God said, I want you to give up your music and become a construction worker? And, and become what? Construction worker. Well, you know, if you wanted me to, you know, I, I always constantly, constantly say if it's, everything's God's hands and it's his, it's his will, his way. I mean, if he wants me to be a construction worker, so be it, you know. Um, I, I've tried many, many a times to walk away. Um, only because, you know, in, in the industry, the industry, it, it's 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 easier now than it's than it's ever been. And there's more more tools and more things at our disposal. Uh, however, you know, growing up, we didn't. The industry was a lot different than it is today. So to make a name, you you needed fifteen people to count on. Whereas I'd rather be those be that 15 people and get the work done myself. So at the end of the day, I know if I've done everything that I possibly can, then, then, you know, God will take it from there and, you know, and get me to the next part. And I, I, like I, like I said, anybody, anybody that goes into the arts, you know, you, you, you need to do it for the love of music. You need to do it for the love of, of yourself and for the love of making music and, and making people happy. And, you know, if you're in the church, you know, to use it for to, for celebratory purposes and worship purposes, you know, or, you know, and if nothing more, just to your own mental health. I mean, the arts, I'm a huge advocate of the arts. The arts improve improve schooling, improve, you know, you, you learn history, you learn math. Um, I have three students now that um, to see their progression and to see at a young age what they're able to do is just amazing. And it's all because arts makes a difference. And living in Connecticut and you know, the home of the Yukon Huskies, I'm going to say this and probably going to get flagged for it, but, you know, sports is great and sports is fun to watch and um, I have nothing against sports. I played sports in high school and college, but as a form of expression, music, arts, dance, you know, those are, those, those are the things that can help you move forward for anything and anywhere you want to go. Are you okay? mentally and emotionally at this moment in time? I like to think so, yeah. <laughs> what do you think drives you to come up with these titles for your album, Hometown Homecoming? For instance, 
we all know that here on my heart, Father's Day 2024 is regarding your father. And you also made an issue to saying that your mother passed away. What year was that again? Uh, 2011. Okay, so like almost 13 years. 13 years. years So all of these have an experience in your life that you derive from. Love is more than words can say. What words? So that that track was actually that wasn't going to make the album, and then I ended up putting it on there, and it, it it seems to resonate with a lot of people. That goes to show you that you know it's one of those things that people go, "Hey, wait a minute, I have that experience." You know, people um, growing up, there were numerous people in 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 my neck of the woods and whatnot you know that it's kind of funny when you're first forming relationships and you know in your teens and in your 20s you know uh you know these people had had said you know through and and i'm speaking of friends and speaking of colleagues you know i love you or you know and love is more than words can say you know it's it's about action it's about it's not necessarily what you say but what you do and i think that um we all kind of again can understand that feeling it's you know um wherever you are in the country or wherever you are in the world everybody you know there's there's different feelings when it comes to someone says you know i love you you know but but yet you know they're you know hanging out hanging out with the guys you know six days a week seven days a week and you know and it, where's the sense of family where's the sense of you know um relationship where's the sense of you know it it just doesn't make any sense so the so that that's, that's a song that touches with it and it's uh inspired by um i won't say inspired by taylor swift but kind of from that perspective of writing you know where it's uh, it's another life experience that whether you're from bridgeport whether you're from you know california you can you can kind of resonate is this sort of like a love song would you consider this as love song it's one of those introspective love songs you know it's like um it's like it makes you think but yet but yet people it's it's a double entendre it's it's saying one thing and meaning something else but in but it but it's in a love song format so kind of like you know uh sinatra's the lady is a tramp it's saying one thing and it's doing something else you know and that's 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 kind of the the fun um with the putting putting this album together was was able to do a play on on, on scenarios situations try things that i haven't tried before and yes i'm i'm working on the christmas stuff and i hope uh, when Christmas comes around, that it's going to be like last year, but um, <laughs> if you even knew the Christmas stuff that's coming out, um, it's just it, it's it, it's just that whimsical, fun play on. I just I just I don't want to say sat- satirical things on life, you know. I mean, like they say, don't take life too seriously. And I think, you know, post COVID, we've we've gotten to the point where we've been just you know just so caught. It. We're now catching up of all the time that we missed, and and nobody still knows what they're doing. So go figure. <laughs> well, they say that we're sort of have some sort of normalcy, but people are still getting COVID and. But life goes on. You move on. 
And I know that the pandemic affected a lot of opera singers and many of them, especially we familiar with Nadia Aidi and all the others, they were doing their performances online and it was enjoyable, not really enjoyable, but people had to work from home and all this. And now we're back where we are and we're creating wonderful music like you are. Was there ever a time that you thought, even during the pandemic, like, you know, this is, I guess this is the stop. This is the, uh, this is where it all ends. I'm going to die of COVID. I better get my affairs in order. Was that going through your mind at one point? I think at one point, you know, we were, we're like, well, if we don't do this and we don't do that, you know, I mean, we were fed, we were fed a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of misinformation. Um, there's a lot of cons conspiracy theories and, you know, um, it's probably not the proudest moment in our history. Um, however, you know, we were able to get through it, but it opened the doors for a lot of ideas. And it opened the doors, you know, especially with AI. Um, AI is playing a big, huge part in, in how we can get things out there and, and we can do all these things and we don't need to hire a creative create creator to push your music out there for $30,000 a month, which is atrocious. If you create a system and you put your material out there and your fans enjoy it and, and, and you enjoy it, then you're doing everything right, right? So, you know, uh, the pandemic and anxiety, as you know, are not two things that go hand in hand. We were virtually like kind of slaves to what we were doing at home. But what I find really funny about the pandemic and about this album is that if you go back, I can't believe four years now, if you go back four years and people were like, I had to spend time with my family. Oh my God, I had to spend time with my wife and my kids and my this. You know, that's what this album is. It's it's about, we used to spend time with our family all the time. We used to spend time with our relatives and our friends and our neighbors and we didn't have COVID. You know, we celebrated and, and, and you know, being indoors was okay. But we're so used to carrying one of these and, you know, and living off of that. And so go to work, come home, eat, get on the phone, go to bed, rinse and repeat. And I always constantly am talking about my, my experiences growing up and, you know, what I did and how I did it and, you know, the people around me and, you know, um, Really sounds like I came from a broken home, huh? <laughs> um, I say that because, you know, in today's day and climate, it, that seems to be, at least here in the U.S., everyone does come from a broken home in some way or some form. I'm very thankful to God I didn't have that experience. So my experience and my memories and everything else, and, and you can hear it on the album, is that of joy and exuberance. And, you know, we got to get out of the negative mindset of, you know, well, this didn't happen, that didn't happen. Things are going to happen, things are not going to happen. It's what you make of it. And I think that's kind of the message, you know, the album also speaks of it as well. Well, Jim, you were talking about AI and AI music. And I've spoken to many artists on that whole subject. What do you think of AI music? And then I bring up the whole now and then the last Beatles song by Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr worked on it. And they used AI to extract the vocals of John Lennon from the pianos and the music that George Harrison did. And they created this fantastic song so what are your thoughts on AI generated music and what do you think is the future of it? Oh, AI is here to stay. And, you know, um, so I have a very good friend who is a drummer and he works for a major label. Um, I 
can't say which one uh, because I don't have his permission. But however, uh, AI can be a very, very good learning tool. The thing is, is that, you know, drummers are actually looking at, at people who are saying, oh, AI is going to be the end of us. Do you remember when the drum machine came out? Did the drum machine actually take away the drummers? No, it opened up It opened up the, the playing field, so to speak, right? Well, you can use AI to write and correct, collectively put your thoughts and music down. Because the same 12 notes, right? You move, you move the, the the paradigm shift of, of of chords and and melody and lyrics and put them together. This can be a tool for you to write, and some really good music can come out of this. Mm -hmm. um, I support all styles and forms of music. However, in the in the last ten years, there's been nothing that really really is that exciting you know when you say you know you know little sneezy and the yeah, choos and you know and you get a bunch of you know 20 year olds go oh i remember them you know most of if, if when i say you know aretha franklin george michael you know uh pat boone you know when we, Frank Sinatra, Elvis Presley, these are the people who created the innovation and created the patterns of music that we now have to look and have this platform and go, like, okay, you've got me going now. <laughs> because Taylor Swift is talented, and I'm not taking that away from her. However, you know, look at all the female vocalists that ever existed that have gone before her. I don't think I'm just I'm thinking of one artist like I just just heard a track of, of hers and it was the last concert that she did with David Foster before she uh, passed from cancer Donna Summer mm -hmm. when you hear Donna Summer's last dance I think it's written doesn't hold a candle to Donna Summer the range the power the soul the drive the musicians hell they're sitting there having a good time they're like you know, and they're they're going at it. You know, I mean, to each his own. Every different style of music is 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 how the person wants to translate it, right? And and, and how they want to interpret it. But you know, getting back to AI, AI again. You, if you use a multitude of of, of software to use and tell AI, I want to use these changes, I want to use this, I want to use that, here are my lyrics, here's this, you know, nobody right now, and again, my, my friend who's in the industry had said to me, he said, no one is spending $4,000 an hour on studio time anymore. And, and because you can do this all in home studios and share the files and share software. And that's one great thing that came out of the pandemic is the fact that we all had to think. Hmm. We all had to think. We, you know, we all had to re, you know, we didn't know when we're not talking about re reinventing the wheel. We had to learn how to, how to get in touch with our own emotions, our own feelings, and actually sit down and be productive. And do something that wasn't demeaning or demonstrative to something else. That being said, um, I love what AI is doing, and you know it. And you know, it may be taking a lot of jobs away, mm. but those again, you need to reinvent and go with the times and say, let me be part of an AI team that does this. Let me think. Let me be part of something that does this, because especially when you're a young musician and you know you're very talented and you're going to play in you know your local your local bar uh or local venue i mean chris do you remember the days when you used to be able to you know print, go to print with print shop on the computer 
and you had your dot matrix printer that went like this. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you go, you go to your local copy store and I think it's maybe like six cents a copy. Okay. I'm showing my age now. And then on top of that, you know, and then you put those on the telephone poles and go around town and, and to try to promote yourself. That's not the climate of the world we live in. Social media is a, it is healthy if you use it the right way. And the AI tools are there to help you engage yourself to actually make you a better version of you. So I'm all for it. And I and and in term in, 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 in terms of music, I mean I still like playing, so and I and, and I, I I still like getting into into the into the studio, but I do it remotely. You know, why not work with people and why not work with people who can do things remotely? And that's why this this particular album took it it, it was going to go in one direction and then I just wanted to come back to the whole thing about home and family and and about who I am because the next ideas that I have built out well everybody will have a better understanding of who I am by this album, right? And then the, everything that's in the future will kind of make more sense. Does that make any sense? <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, it sort of makes sense. I'm more interested in wondering a lot of bands out there will never ever touch AI because it takes away from talent. Like you want to have, like you mentioned, you want to have a drummer and you want to have a keyboardist, you want to have a bassist, guitarist, you want to have maybe whoever, background vocals, that's music. And then in, they're in the studio and they may be in different countries, but they're creating this beautiful song. You don't want to be in a 57 Chevy playing The Temptations or... or I hate to say this, but if you can take Elvis Presley and clone his voice and listening to Elvis Presley's greatest pop tunes of the 80s, which will never happen, that's what people are going to do. They're going to say, listen to this. I got Elvis Presley singing 80s tune. In fact, this 83 tune that came out, he's singing it, no, as an AI. So, so, so for any of your listeners... And, and when this actually posts in ears, last night on America's Got Talent, this young man sang, okay? And he sang in a 50s kind of style of music in a song that he wrote. And he ended up saying that, you know, he used, he, 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 it, it's his words and it's his changes and everything else, but he used AI as a tool. And now everybody's going, you know, well, oh my God, this sounds great. You're, you're bringing the 50s back. You're bringing Elvis Presley back. Uh, I might catch some flack for this one, but again, music right now, you know, every genre, every genre has, I mean, being a jazz pianist, mm-hmm. I hate to say that you, you know, jazz is kind of at a stalemate. Classical music is at a stalemate. Hip hop, hip hop is, you know, we repeated the same themes. You know, you know, um, I'm gonna, you know, I'm, I'm gonna drink my forty, drink my gin and juice, and go party here and go to do this and do that. That's all well and good, you know, but. A big thing for everyone is, oh, I like the beat, you know, and that's with a lot of pop music. Oh, did you check out that beat? Yeah. Did what about the lyrics? What about the harmony? What about everything else? You know, and nobody ever nobody hears that. They just hear what the rhythm track is, and I think AI is AI is bringing people to the point of saying, hey, if you think the beat is cool, well, listen, listen, listen to the hook, and it's something infused from the seventies and it's got something from the nineties. And I look at it as a, as a learning curve 
a learning tool and something that we can go, you know, I think we can do something productive with it. Are people going to use it for the wrong reasons? Sure. Um, I don't know how, but, you know, like everything, people end up, people end up doing the wrong, the wrong thing and something happens. But, you know, as long as you're creating, as long as you're thinking, and as long as you're just trying to do something that's original to you, then, you know, I'm all for it. But is music really original? Isn't it just the same four chords? Isn't it just one octave lower, one octave higher? And then here you have melody progressions here, harmonizing here. I mean, listen, you got songs out there that sound alike. And let me mention to you again about <laughs> the whole issue with Beyonce Knowles, who released her song Halo, and Kelly Clarkson, who has a song called Already Gone, which sounds similar, she was prevented from releasing her song because they sound alike. You're, if, if you, so if you monetized chord changes, right? A one, a, a one, six, four, or five progression, which is, you know, your, your do up, dum, da, da, dum, da, da, dum, da, da, dum. If you actually monetize that, every 50 song would be in breach, would be a totally illegal. And let's talk about the blues. It's the first, the fourth, and the fifth of, of any scale. Do you know how many blues songs there are? So therefore, only one blues song could actually get through if you monetized or if you copyrighted that whole one, four, five, right? So music's gonna repeat. You know, it, it you know, again, at, at some point you're gonna find you're gonna find repetitive patterns, you're gonna hear things that sound like other songs, you're gonna hear, you know, even voices that sound like other voices. I mean, there's a vocalist who's out, I can't think of her name. Um, and she's on YouTube, and she sounds like Ariana Grande, and that's great. But she sounds actually better than Ariana Grande. And now, I and she guarantee it, Jim. If I play a Dell tune and I play a Lauren Daigle tune in front of you, you won't be able to tell the difference because they no. both sound the same. They both sound the same, and you know, and then you throw in front of them the same the same song or a similar song in the same style, yeah, it's going to cross, it, it's going to cross hairs, you know? So the, the, the thing is, the thing is, is to, you know, to their own self be true, you know, you know, you find a genre that you like the most. And, and when you write, just, you know, try to, try to make sure what you're writing and what you're composing is from the heart. I think when anything's from the heart, you're going to get more emotion than if you're just going out and and repeatedly just trying to pop things out just for the sake of doing it. Here's something for you, Jim. I heard a really interesting video. So what it was, was someone had taken the first eight seconds of Hey Jude by the Beatles, put it through an AI, and it completed it. So I, what I don't understand is, if AI goes through the whole entire universe of the internet to grab whatever it needs and then produce it, why can't it find Hey Jude out there? And it's, oh, here it is. This is how it's completed. Why would it say, that's interesting. Hey Jude, don't make it. Okay, boom. And you put it through it again and it came up with a second version Then it didn't even sound alike. So AI really isn't that smart. So from what I've heard, there's multiple programs out there that will record AI music. One of them, it, it, it depends on how much I, from, from what I've, I've read up on the subject, depending on what program you're using, if, 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 if their whole database is full of just, you know, 
pre art artists and catalogs and things that are you know that can be copied and i mean it, again this all has to do with programming and algorithms and things of that nature you know the more information you put the more it has you know has it has to work with the less information that you have you know it, sure is it easy to copy i i well i would assume it would be you know um it, it's getting it's getting to the point that i i've already heard on netflix uh, a couple movies that have just been released the music has been all done with ai so that means they hire someone they don't have to hire someone at you know twenty to fifty thousand dollars to and, and and on top of that pay monetization rights and, and 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 residuals it's like okay we did it and we just we'll just throw it right back in the kitty you know it's um it's scary where ai is going from mm -hmm. from, from from photo i mean i i was just have i just just reading an article in, in a magazine that had a story that people are creating AI influencers and these women look so real but somebody screwed up the, the woman is leaning against a, uh, uh, a her hands on a pole but you don't notice that she's got eight fingers mm -hmm. very attractive though <laughs> eight fingers so um, I mean, like anything, it, it's got to be perfected, but it's all what you use it for. If you use it for the right purposes, you know, I think, I think we can move, we can, we can do a lot musically, but, you know, and, and just even, even artistically. I, there's another thing I saw a rendering of somebody took Starry Night in a, we're able to make Starry Night infused into something, you know, like a motion and made a move. And the entire painting opened up and, and started doing this and started doing that. I think that's kind of neat. You know, it it's a different way of, of having some self-expression because the, I, I don't know what they call them, Gen Zs or I forget the one after that. No one, no one has any anything original to, to process or think about, you know, and at least this will open up the door and trying to get the creative juices flowing. Well, AI is getting so good that what makes anybody saying, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna film a movie and do this one prompt. This is how it starts. This is the main character, blah, 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 this large prompt. And then I, I want it to end this way. And I want this music. And boom, you get this whole movie, which is done in total AI. And there's no actors. There's no actresses. They're all made up. I mean, what do you do? You sell it and say, I like your work. And then you get paid for it. But you don't even do this. You just thought you use AI, but you're actually a, a garbage man. You know what I mean? Well, you know... I think that's the stigma too is that you know it's like well you got to go to school for drama and you got to go to school for this and that who's to say that somebody who's got an idea for something i mean you know star wars star wars and 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 the way it was um thought up and written it you know is is a lot different than a lot of the movies that you see which have the same reoccurring theme Good guy, bad guy, drugs, you know, sex and everything else in between, you know, it gets boring after a while. You know, it's like, oh, another War Mark, Mark Wahlberg movie with the same theme, you know. And maybe the garbage man has a great idea of a space alien who comes down and he comes down and and he's playing the guitar in an all 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 Beatles tribute band, but mind you. Him and Joe Rogan do a podcast together. Yeah. I know. I know. It sounds, I'm being very facetious, but the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, having a new concept 
open-ended discussion, I think is, is, is nice to have. And if it's great and people like it, then why not? You think there'll be ever a time that when AI is at the point where it becomes ASI, artificial super intelligence, where now you're putting the world in its hands to make decisions? Well, <laughs> oh, you want to go there, huh? Um, I Right now, they have AI apps for law, and they can take crime scene photos, and they can they can do better work than humans can, can do. I hate to say this, but America as a country, even though we're the greatest country in the world, we've become, I guess maybe humanity has become lazy to a certain degree. That being said, um, you know, I mean, it's like, you know, America, land of the free, home of the brave. And yet, you know, we can get things made overseas that cost, you know, somebody $40 an hour to make them here. So I'm not trying to get too political, but could, could there be something that would take over the world? I mean, biblically, there's supposed to be a supercomputer. And it's kind of like looking like it's going to go that way, but I guess only time will tell. So let's talk about the older music from the 40s and 50s, you know, the 78s, the 33 and a third, the vinyl albums. Do you agree that vinyl sounded a lot better than cassette tapes and CDs? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, judging by my vinyl collection of over 10,000 pieces of vinyl. Really? And I've got, I mean, I've got vinyl here, vinyl there, vinyl over here, vinyl downstairs. Um, you're able, you're, when, when the needle goes in the groove and you're actually able to hear the, the album, and you're able to hear the music and, and be able to feel it. You know, the electronic reproductions are nice. I mean, I actually thought about doing this album in a, um, and put it in a, putting it uh, just, throwing it on vinyl to see what it, it you know it sounded like wow um there was more there was just there was more of a connection I mean, you were actually hearing the music the way it was intended to be heard with tape you've got you've got the friction of you know tape it wears out a track wears out and mp3 and you know, unless you have a really really high-end system and compressor and eq and all that good and amp and you know and then you then you can then you can reproduce it by that by that time you but you're probably invested in like ten to fifteen thousand dollars and you know it's close but it's no cigar and you know what's you know what's even more despicable is that you can go to any thrift shop like the one down the street from me and for a dollar you can buy some of the most classic albums that have ever been recorded and you know to buy this music and and to play it and you know bring it home and share it um i mean that, that's what music is all about you know don't get me wrong the digital age the ease of you know it being online this album being online and being able to throw it to video and then this and that that's great but it's nice to hold something in the hand and read, look at the artwork on the album and look at who look at who put the album together and the names of the people who played bass and drums and you know what kind of keyboards did I use and you know who did this and who did that. So I mean, I'm glad vinyl's back. Um, I've got seven turntables in my home, so really, yeah. It, yeah, it, yeah, and it's, I'm, 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 I'm committed and dedicated. <laughs> so, you know, it's, to me, to me, 
also being a musician is also listening. And if you're able to listen to what the things that you enjoy and also the things that inspire you and also the various different styles, you know, I mean, you could waste a whole day, not waste a whole day, you can spend a whole day reacclimating yourself to so many different styles of music and artists you never heard just by hearing the music the way it should be sound, it should be heard. What would you say is your favorite vinyl album? Ooh. Okay. This is this is going to be one for for uh, for you and for your fans. I mean, I've got many favorites, but a unique favorite. Uh, let's go back to the 80s. If you remember the motion picture License to Drive, okay? Vaguely, yeah. Yeah, Corey Haim, Corey Feldman, right? So there's a scene within the movie that um, motion picture rules are if it, if it, if it, gets played for three seconds, they have to put it on the soundtrack. So they stick a cassette tape into the cassette player and it ends up, you hear it for about three seconds and then they retract the, the cassette from the uh, cassette player, okay? You never get to hear the song, but if you listen to the soundtrack, the song is called Time Starts Now by um, by, uh, oh, geez. Uh, yeah, Time Stars Now was, oh, got it. Time Starts Now by the Boys Club. Oh, okay. So, I went, I had the cassette for many, many years, and so you talk about home time, hometown homecoming, right? I was at a roller skating rink, and back then you could bring back more roller skating rinks. <laughs> so I brought my cassette tape there, and I played this song. And there just happened to be a girl there that I didn't know, and she's like, "Hey, you know, you want to?" And I. I couldn't stand on the roller skates, and anyway, long story short, I'm going hand in hand with her around, around, around the rink. And when you're 15, 16 years old, it's like, this is the power of music. That song, I couldn't remember. I, I, I lost a cassette many years later, so I heard the song somewhere, and I said, "What is the name of the song? What is the name of the artist?" Found out the name of the artist, and then I got, in 2019, I got a copy of the album off of eBay. And in it was the press package and photo for the group. And no one had ever, ever heard of this group, but they did a they did a Donny Osmond cover on it. The, it's actually well written. And it's <laughs> you listen to the whole album, you go, oh my God. And... Funny thing is, it's not really on Spotify or Amazon or any of those sites. I guess it's kind of gotten lost in the in in, in the trap in the crosshairs. But that particular song, I wanted to be the first song for the first dance at my wedding. So, I mean, and the song was called "Time Starts Now." Wow. So. So there's some homework for you to listen to. And then when you, so now I, you listen to a song like that and it gives you the inspiration to write some of those ballads. And that's like where, you know, when will it be me kind of came off that same format. So you see how everything just ends up coming full circle. Yeah. So why do you like that song so much? I guess because I'm a ballad writer and it just, yeah. you know, it, it's not that I can't write, you know, fast up tempo stuff, but you know, when it has a lot of emotion, I, I come from that David Foster school of writing. 
you know, you, you, you when you can tap into someone's emotion, tap into people's emotions, tap into um, just pull out those core changes that really, you know, hit your heart and uh, and and also hit the heart too. Did you know? I don't know if you realize this, but did you know there's a Beatles album called the White Album, which we all know, right? Ringo Starr's personal copy was sold for $790,000 in an auction. But this is an interesting part. There's a one-off recording of Bob Dylan's Blown in the Wind was sold for $1.8 million in auction just a few years ago. And there's so many really expensive vinyl albums out there, but are you going to be welcome to the AI music auction and then you're going to purchase a CD completely done by AI for a million dollars because it's the very first CD that was ever created in AI. Would you pay that money? I mean, AI is getting to a point where I remember being in a, in a museum called Musée Beaux-Arts, Musée Beaux-Arts, which means uh, art museum in French. And there was the very first Apple computer under glass. And I went, this is interesting because I used to, that was my very first computer I ever worked on was that Apple computer. And someone made a note, what if one day you're walking and you see your iPhone under glass? And people are going to say, what is that? It's an iPhone, an <laughs> i what? You know? I think, I think AI needs to progress to a certain level or a certain standard. And, and right now, right now, you know, there's, there's, I, I, I just, I just thought of something, you know, doing AI recipes, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure if you threw that through chat GPT, it could, it could generate something. It's never going to take away the human factor, you know, um, it's replicating it well, but we have a hundred, over a hundred years of recorded music that, again, you know, when it comes to classical music, jazz, rock, I think I think rap is is poetry put to music, and that can be very easily replicated, no problem. Only because it's again, it's syncopated poetry to me to to a rhythm um however you know i don't know you know it it all it it, it all depends if people are just going to say you know we want to challenge this we want to see if we can make the white album better than the white album could have ever been the beatles were innovative However, they were doing the pop music of the time. So for us, it was in the UK, it was already a staple. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. It's just like rap and hip hop for us when it hit when it when it hit overseas was like, you know, it was a whole exciting brand new thing. And we already had gone through the Sugar Hill Gang. We had already gone through, you know, at least a hundred artists. So I don't know. It it's going to be exciting to see what happens. You know, just wait a week. Things might change. <laughs> Why do you need so many turntables? Well, I've got two in, two in the studio downstairs. I got an entertainment center up here. I've got a portable one, so if you, if you want to go outside and it's one of those suitcase ones, um, and I'm trying to think what the uh, the other one, uh, the other one's a spare in case everything else breaks. So, with your vinyl albums, your ten thousand vinyl albums, do you have total catalogs yeah. of bands. Yeah, I mean. Um, you name a genre, I mean, you know, well, first and foremost, big Sinatra fan. So I have li literally everything Sinatra's ever done. And then, you know, um, 
all of Johnny Mathis's stuff, all of Barry Manilow's stuff, Tower wow. of Power, Earth, Wind, and Fire, uh, wow. Neil Diamond. Um, then, then we, we break down things in the Broadway. Um, you know, Stan Getz, oh. uh, Miles wow. Davis, John Coltrane. Wow. And, yeah, and 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 the, the list goes on, and and a lot of the, a lot of these albums, Chris, it, were just simply like, you know, a dollar a piece because just before vinyl started becoming popular, um, people were throwing it away. It's like, oh, it takes up too much room in my house. Then they realize what they have is is worth a lot of money, <laughs> you know. And I think the most I've ever paid for one album was probably 150 bucks. 150, so, wow. But it's worth it if it's something that you know you you want to hear come to life. That's amazing. Wow. I don't think there's going to be ever an outlaw vinyl album, so I'll arrest you if you have any, but that's a collection of 10,000. Wow. How much do you think all that would be worth if you were to sell it all? That's a, that's a, that's a funny question. I mean, at least, at least maybe 10, maybe 15,000. Mm. And that's, Again, you know, like they say, one man's one man's uh, junk is one man's treasure. So, you know, when when people throw something out or donate something, you know, it has a meaning. And you know, again, that music connects us. So, yeah. you know, someone may not like Engelbert Humperdinck, however, you know, there's someone who is in the market for Engelbert Humperdinck and Lo and behold, you know, um, you know, you could you could probably find this stuff at a at a thrift shop or a used record store, and maybe maybe buy everything that he's ever done if some if it's there for twenty bucks, you know. You know, people just want to get rid of it. It's sort of like you want to sell your your um, sixty three Avanti. For like a thousand dollars when what would it be worth now you know nobody you know chris nobody has any um what's the word uh nobody has any appreciation for anything anymore you know i think i, I don't know if they have these shows in canada but very quickly you know, there's there's this one show on Netflix that's about collectibles, and there's you know like baseball cards. Now, I collect baseball cards, and and actually I am a philatelist, meaning you know stamp collector, coin collector, and you do it because you love it. You know, but these these like comic books, you know, two point one million dollars, hmm. you know. It's a grade nine point five, and this and that. like, I have my dad's comic books, Roy Rogers, and you know, they're in. I mean, they have a whole grading system, but you know something? The artwork is just so beautiful. It's getting back to that artistry. We don't have that anymore. Remember when you used to be able to buy a comic book and, and, and a can of soda and some bubble gum at the corner store all for a Exactly, while? yeah. You know? Um, I remember you could buy a cassette single for $2.98. Now, with some of the music that, that's out there, even if they offered it for $2.98, I'd say you're overcharging me. Dang it. I just saying, you know, but which actually brings me to there's a song on the album. You, you, you asked me before and I didn't answer the question. 
the song Freddy's Not Home. Mm -hmm. So Freddy, Freddy's not here. here. Freddy's not here. Uh, <laughs> well, Freddy was my next door neighbor growing up. And, you know, we did everything together, you know. You know, from, you know, hanging out to, you know, playing baseball or football at the street or basketball or whatever the case may be. Funny thing is, his mom spoke broken English. And it always was that whenever I walked over to Freddie's house to come over, his mother just simply would say, and, you know, in very broken Spanish, uh, it was, you know, Freddie no here. So it was one of those kind of playing on, on life experiences. I said, you know, Fre you know, Freddie's not home. And, and again, it, tell, it, it tells the story of, you know, you know, you, your best friend hanging out, doing this, doing that. And, you know, but the mother, but, but that one connecting factor is, is mom saying he's not here. And he would be sitting, eating at the table at the back of the kitchen. And she's telling me he's not here. Never understood it. I personally think it's hysterical. <laughs> so you know, again, that's that's what make what makes me me and what ties in everything to the, my hometown. And um, those are the, those are those things that you know you you, you couldn't put a, a price on. Exactly. Yeah. So I love hometown homecoming, and I'm looking at the actual photo of it, and it's got a lighthouse. And the, the houses and then surrounded by water and a beautiful what looks like partly sunset what is your fascination with lighthouses again it's it's a new england thing um it's the spiritual meaning of lighthouses um my dad always he also liked lighthouses um and you know again growing up in the city we you know the lighthouse is the staple and uh, that just, it, that actually happens, you know, it, it's a beacon of light. It's drawing you home, you know, and just like with the lighthouse, you know, it has the same meaning in this, in this sense, it's drawing you back home to where you came from and, um, and where you're going or what you've done or what you haven't done and any of those life, life experiences. Fireworks 2025. Four. Wow. So that's obviously Independence Day, 2024. It's a great song. What was your songwriting process around that one? Okay, my wife's going to kill me one. And two, I'm glad you asked that. So the fact that the, the fact that this came out, you know, prior to the 4th of July, and in Bridgeport, Connecticut, we have the second largest parade uh, uh, around end of June, second to the Macy's Day Parade. And our fireworks show is the second largest. So, hmm. so that's the reason why I wanted to call fireworks. On a back end note, um, when my wife, before she was my wife, when we first met, uh, there was maybe maybe 20 or 30 blocks off in the distance. Um, she being from, you know, the northern part of the state, I, I being from the southern, had heard these, what they sounded like fireworks. And, you know, my dad and I had a laugh at that particular point because that was gunshots. So, like, like I like I said, it, it's it's not bringing it's not bringing our city into in, into a, a at that particular time. It could have been just you know police at the shooting range or whatever the case may be. But the thing was that it said, "Oh, it sounded like fireworks," and you know we know what fireworks sound like. And fireworks during the day, no, that's not going to happen. So. It has a meaning of the fourth, but the funny back meaning of the song, you know, is to is to 
kind of celebrate that particular one moment in, in time. So I think it's hilarious personally. But. You're not going to appreciate this question, I think, Jim. Was Hometown Homecoming completely written using AI generation? No. No. Uh, only one track uh, where there were background vocals. Um, we had experimented with um, the to get to get a core theme by using a series of programs and everything else to try to to try to build something out. <sighs> Honestly, it's it's it wasn't it wasn't easy to to try to do and doing it the old-fashioned way just happened to be a lot easier um but uh an engineer that uh and and fellow and also fellow musician that i work with in new york state they're they're on the cusp in that particular studio of using AI technology on, on the Neve board, you know, and which that can handle over a hundred something channels. And it's not quite there yet. I mean, it, it'll, it, it'll help do some things in terms of mastering uh, and remastering things. And that was, that technology has been out for a while now, where you can take a track, upload it, and automatically remaster it, and find the right volume and things like that for you know for for digital distribution. So that that end of it worked great. Um, like I said, I'd like to I I wouldn't mind trying an all an all completely AI album. Um, it cut the co it would cut the cost down and you know it'd be it'd be fun to take you know and you you take band in the box pro tools and and then one one of the ai programs out there and infuse them all together um maybe i can do an ai song for christmas and call it the ai you know justin's roasting on an ai fire or you know um something crazy um because maybe by then the technology just would be that good is there something that ai can't do in music that will need actual human beings to do it yes you can't replicate um dynamics at least not yet when, when dynamics i'm speaking of whitney houston so if i punched in there and i went you know uh i want her, her to sing mary had a little lamb you know or i want mariah carey's you know five octave you know you know or i want um I want that rasp of Johnny Cash, or I want that that horn intonation of Tower of Power, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Um, if you've ever listened to Drum and Bugle before, I mean the way the way those horns are structured, and you know the way the the, the way the melodies and the harmonies all work in, in tandem with each other. Not to mention your percussive lines, your snare line, your bass drum. I don't. Th I don't think it's there yet. You know those dynamics, those those, those 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 key. You know, for example, what if I want you to hit the piano harder? What if I want the Hammond organ? to turn on and turn off the Leslie at any given point, right? Um, 
It's not there yet. You sure? At least from at least from what I've seen. It can duplicate Amy Winehouse inflections and tones and vocals perfectly. That it convinced me that it was Amy Winehouse and it wasn't. It was an AI generated song. I mean, maybe I'm maybe I'm maybe I'm blind to it. I just haven't I just haven't heard it yet. You know, I've heard I've heard some samples of. Uh, uh, not Christina Aguilera, but uh, Britney Spears, um, and I mean, and that's almost a direct copy. But really, when and Christina goes from her head voice to, her, you know, to her chest voice. Is that something that you're able to control? You know? Hey, if, if I wanted to use AI music generation to create these beautiful Italian opera tunes, I could produce an album under my name with me singing Italian opera and call myself the greatest opera tenor in the world, but it's all music generation. What will make them not take um, Luciano Pavarotti's voice and come up with an album of him singing Britney Spears' greatest hits? That's what <laughs> I don't like about AI, though. I mean... Yeah, I know. It, 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 take, it, it, it takes away the... It takes away the music and musicianship, you know. But, but you know, again, drummers are drummers are, have been going, you know. Oh, you know, we we've, we've been going through this for years, and oh, it's going to replace us. It's going to replace us. Drummer drummers are actually laughing now. They're like, <laughs> go ahead, you know, and. I don't. I don't know. I I look at it as as, it, as an opportunity. Okay. Let me let me let me throw this at you. Let's say you have a, someone who's disabled, okay. And they're at they're at the computer. And they can't afford to play an instrument. But maybe they're a great writer. Maybe they've got, you know, maybe they have musical training. Okay. So now, if you're able to go in and use a series of programs and use AI in, in, in cohesion with um, those programs to bring up the music, and they come up with something. How does that not make them a musician? Teddy, no. go ahead. Sorry. No, I know. I, I know. I, I know what you're. I know. I know what you're probably thinking is, you know, if someone's using it just to copy someone else and and put it out there. I mean. For entertainment purposes, it's going to get old quick, you know. But if you're using it to write music, and then you know you omit you omit the vocalist and put a a real vocalist in there, you know now you're still using it for the right purposes. I mean, there's like there's like a thousand different scenarios where I can I can actually think. Um, how how and where it can be it you used um here's something really uh, here, here's a quick thought is that artists who have passed like you know like let's say a Kurt Cobain or um an Elvis Presley you know you can you can replicate 
you can replicate music in that style. You know, um, and I think there will always be a fan base for it. I mean, there are people who are totally against it, but I don't see anybody stepping up to the plate and saying, you know, a lot of people, some people know me, some people don't know me at all. But the fact of the matter is, is like, it, it's what kind of content are you putting out there? I mean, really, do you care that Britney Spears sings it? Or a or Britney Spears, you know, pseudo like like, or is the song that she's singing really really well written, and you know what I'm saying? So I have to I have to look at things like from both sides. Personally, I'm not a big Beatles fan. Personally, I don't like the Eagles. Now. That being said, um, I like various songs, but I'm I'm not a total super fan. But would it, you know, but would it be funny to hear Britney Spears sing "Yellow Submarine"? You get that, uh, you know? I I think I I don't know. It, I. I honestly think it might bring people back to listening to music again. Why don't you just pay Britney Spears and say, can we use your voice? And then we can create all these amazing different covers of all these amazing different genres, even getting you to sing Italian opera. Well, I mean, she is a soprano. She could well, say, sure. But they, or but they, she could say, nope, can't do it. So, okay, then they can't use her voice if she says no. Right. So with AI, it gives you a sample of, of what she of what it would sound like. I mean, I know what you're saying, you know, but then again, then again, she would have to be monetized and she would have to get residuals and and she would actually have to go in the studio. And then you have to hire a whole production crew and you have to hire everybody else and you know. I think AI is best used for creation, not for replication. What will prevent me, Jim, from finding some of the most hit singles out there, taking one which is number one, number 10, wherever, it's just one of the best songs, and taking it and putting it through an AI and said, can you give me 100 versions of this song? And then taking one of those versions and releasing it. I don't think, I don't think that's using AI in a, in a to replicate. Like I like I said before, to re, to replicate. I mean, I love. Um, don't let me be the last to know by Britney Spears. That's my favorite song. Can I put it through an AI and have it spit out maybe 20 or 30 versions of that song and in using the best one, not only will Britney not even recognize it, but has my own lyrics on it. It's a totally different genre. Hey, why don't I just change it into a classical song? You know? Oh, and just so that it's not recognized as Don't Let Me Be the Last to Know, I'll take that version of Don't Let Me be the last to know that AI did and make a different version and then five, six, seven times and get this version of a song, you'll never know. Original song was Don't Let Me Be Last to Know. You know what I mean? Yeah, I I don't know if the technology is there yet to where you can take I assume that since when songs are copywritten that it would pick those up or if you if you if you said do this in the style of Britney Spears, um, you know, in 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 looking at all these, you know, it, it seems like you know if you said if you put a artist name in there, even if you put a my name in there, it wouldn't it it wouldn't populate. So you have to go, you have you have to break it down by pop, funk, classical. And then, you know, 
I think I think if you did it 20 different times, you're going to get 20 different outputs. You know, um, with both, I from what I assume is that the with the lyrics, if you're copying the lyrics spot on, that they actually have a filter that will recognize. So in other words, you feel like, do you remember the 21st night of September? You know, now that you might sure not. That, Jim? Huh? You sure about that? You ever heard of Dua Lipa? Yeah. You ever heard the song Levitating? Yeah. I'm going to give you some songs that actually sound a lot like Levitating. Ready? Sabrina Carpenter, Espresso, Casey Musgraves, High Horse, Jesse Ware, Spotlight, Calvin Harris, Heartstroke. Um, Caleb, Skyline, Foxes, Skylove, they all sound like levitating. And they're not being slapped with a lawsuit. So, they, so again, you can't, monet, so you can't monetize poor changes, right? So you can't copyright, you know, C, F, G, you know, or C, E, G, or whatever the case may be, right? It's only the melody and the lyrics. So that's where they're they're getting away with the chord the chord the chord progressions are probably the same, but you, you switch up the melody, so like you can have Mary had a little lamb or happy birthday to you. It's the same three notes. Two different songs, same three notes. I have your birthday to you as there's an F in there. So, I mean, I, I that's why I that's why I still think that AI is is going to be a great tool in breaking people out of there because people are just repeating the same old. I not it's not even the same old thing. They couldn't copy the music that we grew up on. They couldn't copy Michael Jackson. They couldn't copy Whitney Houston. They couldn't copy Prince. However, what they're doing is they're copy. They're 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 taking four or eight bars, repeating it, repeating it, repeating it, and it's like you know, oh, isn't this exciting? Isn't this new? No, like you said, it's the same song and it's got five, six different takes on it. So with so the melody and and the and the lyrics that that's what differs in each of the songs. However, the chord changes, let alone probably the bass lines, maybe the bass lines are different, maybe the rhythm tracks are different. Hmm. You've got to send me that list. I gotta to listen to it now. <laughs> because you know, it's it unfortunately nobody has any creative um there, there's no just no creativity and and everybody's just copying the last format or the last algorithm that works that's what i was looking for well levitating is a good song by dua lipa but also coldplay adventures of a lifetime sounds a lot like it. the weekend rockin 50, 50, beginning cupid elton john and britney spears hold me closer well, I mean, Hold Me Closer is basically um, Tiny Dancer by Elton John, and they just uh, did a duet together, and they called it Hold Me Closer. That's it. I wouldn't be surprised. It, again, the American, the American way of writing, it just people don't spend the time to tap into who they are. And that's, you know... That's why an album like mine takes time because I could very easily go, well, I like um, uh, the melody and the chord changes to, uh, you know, Jermaine Stewart's We Don't Have to Take Our Clothes Off to Have a Good Time, you know, or take the chord changes and, 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 and the bass line and the rhythm track. I mean, they all sound great, but at the end of the day, it's like, 
I don't know. You know, it, it's. I mean, I, I get it. We're we're in a we're in a world right now where everybody likes to, if they like one particular style, then it's like let's copy that, you know, and let's put that in a reel and let's put that in a something else. So, you've got um, yesterday great songs from the Great American Songbook Volume One, and uh, today which is Songs from the Great American Songbook, Volume 2, and then A Lighthouse, and then, uh, of course, Christmas Magic, and then A Connecticut Christmas, Christmas by the Seaside, and now Hometown Homecoming. Yeah. And numerous singles. <laughs> <laughs> Just to name a few. Excellent, Jim. I, I think everyone should listen to your Christmas magic. That is one of the best Christmas albums I've ever heard. It's like amazing. So everyone should go down below and check out his albums and his music. Really appreciate this, James, for your time on the platform tonight. And for the fourth time, on our platform, which is amazing. You're not just limited to one time, but you can come as many times as you want. And we're looking forward to new music and we're looking just to see where AI takes us. I mean, like I've heard some great AI music, but what is that going to do to the musicians out there who are like, well, I guess that's it. I guess I'll just go get a job. And then you go to pizza driver, delivering your pizza said, hey, are you Brian May? From Queen? Oh, okay. AI took over your job, right? Okay. Okay, just put it down there. I'll, can you get them? You know, you don't know what's going to happen. Really? Yeah. Who knows? You may you may have Brian May working at a Seven Eleven near you. <laughs> That's true. You don't know. The Uber driver. Hey, you look so familiar. Who? who I, you look like Sting. Are you Sting? Did, did you have a musical career at one point? <laughs> You're an Uber driver. You know? I, I hope that doesn't happen because AI is used for some pretty cool stuff. Like now and then, they just have to say, well, you know, uh, you don't know, but it might get to the point where, I don't know, we don't really know what tomorrow will bring, you know? No. Yeah. You know, servers could crash, the technology could get stolen, and next thing you know, we actually still have to play the old instrument, so. Yeah, but I do like going to a concert and watching people play their instruments and play cover songs or whatever. I don't want to say, hey, guess what? Did you want to see that nice AI band called Sneezy and the Achoos? You know? Yeah, I love that song they sing. It's called Gesundheit. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Great song. Yeah. Don't know who sings it because they don't really show you who the people are, but hey. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we'll see what happens. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate you watching this far and multi-instrumentalist James Norkovich. Everything will be linked down below, including his previous sessions with us the first session is episode 47 check that out and yeah listen to his music excellent music and his new one hometown homecoming it's actually really good so thank you mr norkovich really appreciate the opportunity to interview you again thank you and we wish you all the success and you're welcome to be on here a sixth time a seventh time okay everyone james norkovich out. So she closes up, I loved you better than Wakes up every morning with a smile Giving her all, go 
going the extra mile Helping everyone in need She never turns away But in the quiet moments She wonders and she prays When will it be me? She whispers to the night When will I? Always lending a hand, always showing she cares. But deep in her heart, she's feeling so alone, dreaming of a day when she can call her own. When will it be me? She whispers to the night. Thank you.